have to get you. <laughs> <laughs> I want to introduce to you my son, um, and he has had um, suffering in his life, and um, I wanted to have you talk about that. Could you tell me um, about um, your being depressed? Mm. My name is Nathan. Uh, I'm uh, Kathy's oldest son. I suffered with depression for much of my uh, young adult life and high school life. Um, and it was it was a very dark time for me. Uh, I, I was suicidal for uh, a few years during high school and into college. I really just didn't have uh, any hope in life. I, I spent a lot of time not feeling like I had a choice and I very much uh, oriented my life around how I was feeling. Um, I, I was in a decline and I started just cutting things out of my life. I had a job that I quit I uh, dropped out of school and I, you know, I was reaching adulthood, but I, I didn't have any prospects. And I would just kind of lay on my floor all day and, and just kind of live in this apathetic state. I, I was just, that's where I was for, for a long time. And that was when you came in and you had enough of of that and you basically told me you need help and anything you know you have some choices but you wanted me to go and get some professional help you know it was it wasn't all um, horrible I mean it was horrible but um, the therapist gave us an ultimatum um, either go to the military or you need to have some kind of home where you can um, you can can live and, and thrive and the place that we went to which was there's only one place um, I was horrified um, the, the people there the, the, the people that were therapists were having uh, like they had hats and they would say stuff and they would it was just it was horrible I, I, I hated every minute of it and I thought my son is not going to go there but I didn't have another choice and so um, the beauty of that though is that I felt like that was the darkest darkest place in my life and in your life, but God, God took you out of that. Mm -hmm. So can you tell a little bit more about that? I, I remember we both got back in the car after visiting this facility and we're like, no. no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, it was, uh, it was not a, we didn't get the warm fuzzies from it at all. It was, uh, it was pretty dumpy. It was out of some house. Uh, you know, and uh, I didn't want to go, and but it, it was the only place, mm -hmm. and so I went and I lived there for a month. What I what I learned was that I had been victimizing myself and allowing my feelings to dominate my life. And when you orient your entire life around your feelings you inevitably are victimized in every situation. Um, in my job, I believed I had to go overboard because I wasn't sure if my depression would, you know, mm -hmm. keep my performance from uh, being where it needed to be. And so I always set myself up 
um, and, and tried to overcompensate for uh, because I, I thought that's what I needed to do because of how I was feeling. When, when you're in this, you know, when you're in that place, there's no, there's no future for you. There's no, there's no freedom. And so, at that point, you know, all my ambitions were kind of um, stifled because I didn't see the point in, in continuing. But I, I feel like there was this point where. I had to make a choice to change the way that I thought and, and what I believed in. And what I believed in was, like I said, I'm, I'm a victim to my feelings, I'm a victim to my uh, circumstances. And I remember when we were sitting in the office of that one, that, that one therapist, we were arguing and he basically said, you're just a big man-child and you need to be sent away to a you know inpatient facility or the military or and I was so ready to just argue my way out of it like I'd done so many times before or rationalize my situation um, but I just remember being so tired mm. and saying you know this is the moment it's been so many years, but this is the moment where I'm ready to combat those lies that I've been living with in my life. That was, the, I think, the main turning point for me. Yeah. Um, and that, and, and not just with my my mental illness, but just in my life in general, where I, I became empowered mm. to not only be in control of my feelings, but be in control of every element of my life. You, you really enabled me to to get to that place. What advice would you um, talk about? You know, like how, in that place, in that dark place, um, how maybe like one or two steps, mm -hmm. you know, do you have anything like that? I wouldn't say advice. I can really only speak from my own experience, mm -hmm. but going into this place being being ready to transform um i feel like it was kind of a combination of things mm -hmm. um one it was being open to the fact that not everything i believe is true um and being willing to believe that i have a choice in, in every situation and it's kind of become a personal mantra for me. Mm -hmm. You know, I always have a choice, and whoever will listen to me, I will tell them that they have a choice. Mm -hmm. I think that can be easily confused with you should be able to make your life what you want it, and you should be able to change any situation. But that's that's not really it. It's more about you have a choice about how you are going to react to any situation. Um, you, you have power over how you are going to feel and how you are going to respond and no one can take that power away from you. So yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, that, I love that. I, I, I wouldn't say that as, as advice, but it, it, is, it is a choice even to have that mentality and, and being able to have that mentality and defeat the, the victim mentality that you are powerless uh, to fight against your emotions. Um, that's, that's what you need to be working towards. I feel like you are one of the most empowered people I've ever met. Mm -hmm. You know a truly empowered person when you meet one because life doesn't get them down and situations don't get them down because they are bigger than their situations and they're bigger than the places that they find themselves mm -hmm. and i feel like this is just you've just shown through this this time of hardship mm -hmm. that you will not be destroyed by mm -hmm. by your illness yeah. you, you will not be defined by your illness mm -hmm. I'm just, I'm so glad that you, you have, you have 
you were empowered even now. And it's just amazing, and it's amazing to see that you just have joy and peace, and it's not that there isn't fear or, um, you know, fear about the future, right? but in this moment, in the, in the time that you have, you're choosing to continue to be empowered in yourself. And it's an amazing example. Oh, thank you. <laughs> so um, I would really love to um, hear your stories. And um, even if you can send them to me, um, and then I could read them, and hopefully that this community will be bigger and bigger and bigger um, because I really, my heart is um, wanting to get those stories out. There might be one person that needs encouragement. I'm waiting for that person. I, I feel like this was like really deep uh -huh. kind of thing and so I oh, I kind of want to do something funny yeah or something yeah like pick me up or something like that put put me on my, my shoulder or something like that sounds dangerous I know thank you for watching goodbye peace out oh goodness <laughs>